Hello everyone, back again with movie and tune recap. Today, I'm going to explain an American supernatural horror film from 2006, titled The Grudge Part 2. Spoilers ahead, so watch out and take care. The Grudge is described as a curse that is born when someone dies in the grip of extreme rage or sorrow, the curse is an entity created where the person died. Those who encounter this supernatural force die and the curse is reborn repeatedly, passing from victim to victim in an endless, growing chain of horror. The following events are explained in their actual order, however, the film is presented in a non-linear narrative. In the opening scene, a woman prepares breakfast for her husband, and tension brews between them as the man accuses his wife of infidelity. As the man complain about the breakfast, the woman pours hot oil on his head before striking him with a frying pan, resulting in his death. In another settlement, a man appears possessed and kills his wife by snapping her neck, and their child, who witnesses the incident, is drowned to death. In 2004, in Pasadena, California, Aubrey visits her sick mother, Mrs. Davis, who appears worried despite her condition. Mrs. Davis confides in Aubrey that her sister, Karen, is hospitalized in Tokyo, where people believe she caused a fire that burned down the Siki house. Mrs. Davis asks Aubrey to go to Japan to bring her sister home, as she is unable to do so herself due to her medical condition. Aubrey embark on her journey to Tokyo and upon arriving, Aubrey goes to the hospital in Japan, but initially couldn't see her sister due to the language barrier between the nurses and herself. Luckily, Eason, a journalist who rescued Karen from the fire in the previous film, assists by translating for her, and Aubrey finally sees her sister, Karen, who initially seems unsure of her. After convincing her identity, Karen repeatedly urges Aubrey to get her out of the hospital, insisting that she is the only one who can stop her, and this leaves Aubrey confused. Suddenly, the orderlies enter and restrain Karen to the bed, and as Aubrey leaves the room, Karen whispers a warning, Aubrey, don't go in that house. After everyone has left and Karen has calmed down, the lights in her room begin to flicker. She struggles to break free when a hand grabs her right arm, and as she struggles, Kayako is seen behind her. Karen manages to break free and tricks the guard and the orderlies, and as soon as they open the door, Karen makes her escape. She encounters a group of medical staff who look at her strangely, with Kayako among them. Panicked, Karen runs away and ends up trapped in a hallway, the lights start to go out one by one, and Kayako staggers towards her with the death rattle, and Karen narrowly escapes and reaches the roof of the hospital. There, she hears the death rattle again and backs away to the edge of the roof. Suddenly, Kayako pulls Karen over the edge just as Aubrey and Eason, who are leaving the hospital, witness her fall to her death. Aubrey is horrified and fall to the ground, while Eason sees Kayako clutching to Karen's lifeless body. Later, the devastated Aubrey goes to Karen's apartment, she tries to share the shocking news to her mom but can't and upon seeing their childhood photos, she bursts into tears. Later, while Eason is in his apartment, he watches one of his interviews with Detective Nakagawa about the original family murder-suicide from the first film. When Eason rewinds and slows down the tape, he hears Kayako's signature death rattle and sees her face in the door. He quickly shuts off the television and sees Kayako's reflection, but when he turns around, she's not there. The next day, Eason goes over to Karen's apartment to see Aubrey, and initially reluctant, Aubrey lets him in. Aubrey asks Eason about the burnt house, and he explains Karen's behavior, admitting that he himself feels it, and he knows the fire didn't solve the curse, it only made it worse. Since he can't find the information he's looking for from Aubrey, Eason decides to leave and go to the haunted house, and Aubrey decides to come with him. They arrive at the cursed house, and Eason instructs Aubrey to stay outside the gate. Inside, Eason heads upstairs and finds a closet containing Kayako's childhood diary. An unseen force flips the pages to reveal an eye. Outside, Aubrey sees a ghostly figure inside and decides to enter the house. She hears Karen's voice warning her not to enter, but she ignores it, and suddenly, Toshio's hand grabs Aubrey's arm and pulls her in. As she wonders how she got inside, Eason comes down, and they leave. Back at Karen's apartment, they go through Kayako's childhood diary, 
but the words are written in a strange language, making it difficult to understand. Eason decides to call a friend who is more knowledgeable about folklore to help interpret the diary. At Eason's friend's house, he explains the handwriting, and gives them a book filled with pictures. They discover that Kayako's mother had the ability to heal people by removing evil spirits and feeding them to her daughter, Kayako. Aubrey and Eason find a matching photograph and drawing of a traditional archway outside the house where Kayako grew up. Back at Eason's apartment, they spend time together reminiscing about their past lives and their siblings, and when Aubrey falls asleep, Eason goes into his darkroom to examine pictures he took of the house's exterior. He notices a dark mass in one of the photos and develops another, enlarging that area. As the photo develops, the dark mass grows, and the chemicals turn black. Kayako's head slowly emerges from the picture and then leaps out, grabbing Eason. In the morning, Aubrey wakes up and finds herself alone, so she begins searching for Eason. She enters the darkroom and finds the picture, then notices Eason's body in the corner. She embraces Eason's lifeless body, but it transforms into Kayako, and her arms wrap around him. Terrified, Aubrey runs away as all the pictures in the darkroom begin to show Kayako's face. Aubrey takes a train and then a bus to Kayako's home, on the bus, she notices a man playing peekaboo with an unseen child, but she doesn't realize it's Toshio's reflection. Arriving at the traditional archway she saw in Kayako's childhood diary, Aubrey goes to the house and finds Kayako's mother, Mrs. Kawamata. Mrs. Kawamata explains that although she fed evil spirits to her daughter to heal others, she didn't make Kayako what she is now. She clarifies that the events are not about the house, but about making others suffer as she suffered, and there's no way to stop it. Suddenly, Mrs. Kawamata realizes that Aubrey has brought Kayako with her. She falls to the ground, and as she moves backward, she sees Kayako approaching her, and eventually, Mrs. Kawamata is killed. Aubrey leaves and returns to the cursed house, continuing to grapple with the horror unfolding around her. Aubrey calls home and breaks the news to her mother that Karen is dead. When her mother accuses her of being unable to handle things on her own, Aubrey stands up for herself, expressing her love but also insisting that her mother stop speaking to her in that way. She says goodbye and enters the house, where she sees Karen going upstairs, calling for Doug. Aubrey follows her, and suddenly, the house transforms into what it was like when Kayako lived there. Inside, Aubrey sees Takeo reading Kayako's diary. As Kayako tries to run away, her ankle snaps, and she crawls down the stairs, only to be caught by Takeo, who breaks her neck, recreating the scene witnessed at the beginning of the movie. Flashbacks compare Kayako's death with the present, revealing the exact details of her murder. Aubrey begins to understand the immense pain and suffering Kayako endured, which ultimately led her to become the vengeful spirit she is. In 2006, Allison, a new student at an international high school in Tokyo, encounters popular students Vanessa and Miyuki. Eager to fit in, Allison attempts to strike up a conversation with them, despite Miyuki's belief that Allison has only been at the school for three weeks and Vanessa laughing at her uniform. They eventually decide to take Allison to the Siki house in order to play a prank on her. Once inside, Allison and Vanessa head upstairs while Miyuki is momentarily startled by a noise and catches sight of the bath where Toshio drowned. Sensing something unsettling in the water, Miyuki decides to back away. Vanessa then tells Miyuki to follow her upstairs, Miyuki wants to leave but Vanessa then accuses her of befriending Allison and Miyuki chooses to keep her popularity by doing what Vanessa says. The two girls then tell Allison about the Siki murders and persuade her to enter the closet where Kayako and Toshio's bodies were kept, falsely claiming they were the only ones brave enough to go in. Allison, hoping to gain their friendship, agrees and enters the closet, however, once inside, the girls shut the door on her. Their plan was to take a picture of Allison's scared face to humiliate her in front of their classmates. When Allison screams, the girls try to open the door but can't as a mysterious force seems to be holding it shut. Allison is trapped until she sees Toshio, who emits his characteristic cat-like cry, followed by Kayako emerging from the attic. Allison screams in horror, 
prompting Vanessa and Miyuki to flee the house. Finally, Allison manages to open the closet and follows the other two out. Later, while in class, Allison feels Toshio's cat brushing between her legs, she then senses human hands on her thighs. Pushing her supplies forward on her desk, she peep under her desk to find Toshio curled in a ball at her feet. As she jumps up, she realizes that he is not there, causing her to be embarrassed in front of her fellow classmates. As she sits down, she notices Toshio's cat proceeding to a very exhausted-looking Miyuki sitting at her desk, Miyuki feels the cat touch her but doesn't make a large scene about it and the two then exchange nervous glances. After gym class, Vanessa publicly humiliates Allison about her visit to the school counselor, causing embarrassment in front of the other girls. As Allison leaves, Vanessa starts showering and discovers hair on the floor, realizing her own hair is falling out. After her shower, Vanessa sees a ghostly image of Kayako in the locker room, reminiscent of a scene from The Grudge. Terrified, she urinates on herself and flees. Meanwhile, Miyuki leaves school for an afternoon rendezvous with her boyfriend Michael at a love hotel. While Michael is in the shower, Miyuki prepares for his return by removing her jacket and hair clip, before settling on the large double bed. As she waits, she discovers something unexpected, his protection. She slides under the covers, waiting for Michael's company. Suddenly, she feels something grabbing her from beneath the covers. Assuming it's Michael playing a prank, she laughs until she notices Michael is still in the shower. Panic set in as she realizes something else is under the covers with her. Terrified, Miyuki backs away towards the mirror behind her, and in a horrifying twist, her reflection transforms into Kayako, who emerges from the mirror and grabs Miyuki, pulling her into its depths. When Michael finishes showering and returns to the bedroom, he finds it empty, with Miyuki nowhere to be found. Back at the school, Vanessa and Allison are later interviewed by the school counselor regarding Miyuki's disappearance and their visit to the haunted house. During the interview, Allison breaks down and shouts at Vanessa, blaming her for coercing her into going to the house. Vanessa coldly responds that Allison wanted to come, causing Allison to burst into tears and storm out, followed by the counselor. Left alone, Vanessa anxiously waits in the counselor's office, texting Miyuki to inquire about her whereabouts. As she waits for the counselor to return, she fidgets with pens and plays with the light. Suddenly, the light refuses to turn on, and as she looks down, Vanessa notices the lamp is unplugged. As she moves to plug it in, she catches sight of Toshio's legs running in front of the desk. Suddenly, her phone starts vibrating from an incoming call, and as she reaches for it, she touched Toshio's legs on the desk instead. Shocked, she cries out and retreats from under the desk, frightened. She answers the call, expecting Miyuki, but instead, she hears Toshio's voice on the other end. Panicked, Vanessa rushes out of the school and finds a nearby phone booth to call Miyuki. However, instead of Miyuki, all she hears is a death rattle, and Toshio grabs her legs, consumed by terror, Vanessa is killed by Kayako's long, black hair. Allison is called once again to the counselor's office, where she confides her belief that she and anyone who enters the Siki house are cursed and marked for death by Kayako. The counselor reveals that she went to the house with the police, making Allison believe that she will be Kayako's next victim, and the counselor begins acting towards Allison as if she is being stupid. When Allison mentions Miyuki and Vanessa's deaths, the counselor's demeanor changes, and she ominously informs Allison that they are right beside her. Suddenly, the ghostly apparitions of Miyuki and Vanessa materialize on either side of Allison. Terrified, Allison screams and fall to the floor, and as the counselor transforms into a ghostly figure and approaches Allison with haunting moans, Allison's horror reaches its peak, and she flees from the room in terror, screaming for her life. In Chicago, Bill Kimball has recently married a woman named Trish and is settling into the apartment he shares with his daughter Lacey and son Jake, while Lacey and her friend Sally have warmed up to Trish, Jake remains distant. His unease deepens when the troubled child from their neighbor's apartment, the Flemings, returns home after a period of mental instability. One night, Jake is awoken by a series of loud knockings coming from the Flemings' apartment. Intrigued, he decides to investigate and follows one of the tenants' apartment, where he observes a person, wearing a hoodie, gathering old newspapers from the trash. As the person turns to leave, Jake hides behind an object nearby, 
and to his surprise, he notices two pairs of feet following the person out of the basement. Curious yet perplexed, Jake peeks out from his hiding spot, only to find that there is no one behind the mysterious person. The next morning, after Bill leaves for work, Jake and Lacey head off to school, and on the way, Jake notices that all the windows in the Fleming's apartment are covered with newspaper. Meanwhile, Bill, plagued by doubts about his wife's fidelity, returns home unexpectedly, and to his dismay, he catches Trish on the phone with a coworker named Nate. When Trish asked him what he is doing back home, Bill claimed to have forgotten his keys. As Trish began to look for the keys, Bill squeezed on the key so hard, causing them to cut into his hands, though Trish remains unaware of his distress. After school, Lacey excitedly shows off her cheerleader outfit to Sally, who appears unwell, possibly due to the curse. Disturbingly, Sally drinks milk but then regurgitates it, which horrify Lacey. Before Lacey can fully process what is going on, she receives a call from Jake, who sounds terrified. Rushing home, Lacey finds Jake trembling in his closet, clearly frightened by the ongoing arguments between Trish and Bill. As the night falls, Jake is once again disturbed by pounding noises coming from the walls. Investigating further, he discovers that the mysterious hoodie-wearing neighbor is actually a young woman, and she is banging her arm against the wall while frantically cutting her own hair. After witnessing the ghostly apparitions of Vanessa and Miyuki staring into the window, Jake returns home and decides to spend the night with his sister. However, the night takes a sinister turn when Toshio appears by Sally's bedside, and tragically, Sally succumbs to her demise after consuming too much milk. The next morning, Trish hears banging from the neighboring apartment, and she starts making breakfast in a trance. Bill, who have been under the influence of the spirit of Takeo all along, accuse Trish of cheating, but she stays silent. When Bill complains about the burnt bacon, Trish pours hot oil on his head before fatally striking him, just like the scene we saw at the opening of the movie. Later, Lacey and Jake come back home and find their apartment dark and messy, with the banging next door persisting. While Lacey searches for Bill and Trish, Jake stumbles upon his father's lifeless body in the kitchen, which terrifies him, prompting him to flee. Searching for Lacey, Jake discovers her drowned in the tub, as he hears Trish calling his name, Jake nervously pulls back the shower curtain to find nothing behind it. Suddenly, an already deceased Trish emerges in the tub, telling him it's time for his bath, before Toshio drags her under the water. As Jake flees the apartment, he hears screams coming from the Fleming's apartment, spotting the terrified neighbor running out, he decides to approach her. The girl in the hood turns out to be Allison haunted by Vanessa and Miyuki from their school in Tokyo. Jake accuses her of bringing something back with her that caused his family's death, and she confirms that they have followed her to Chicago. Allison notices Kayako descending the hallway stairs, and shortly after, Jake sees Toshio inside Allison's hoodie. Kayako's hands emerge from the hoodie and pulls Allison into her sweater, causing her body to vanish. As Jake reaches for the hoodie, a ghostly hand grabs his arm, and suddenly, Kayako rises from the hoodie, lurching towards him as the movie concludes. Okay guys, that's all the recap about The Grudge Part 2 from 2006. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next video.